Alrighty guys, this here is a Kawasaki FR651V. It was ran with no oil and it locked up. So we're going to tear it apart and see if I can't save it. And it's from 2015. So we're going to get into this time lapse and uh, get on with it. It's too noisy outside for me to just sit here and you know tear it apart and talk. I'm at the shop by myself today. Alright, and it's a slow day too, so I'm able to record. Alright, so let me go grab some tools and we'll tear it apart. Alright, so real quick, this is a super speed time lapse of tearing this engine apart. It's, it's sped up 20 times. That is really fast. So I figured I'd take a few minutes to answer a few questions since I can't see the playback on the computer because it's going by so fast. So the number one question I get asked is why do I always do engine teardowns or work on engines? Why am I always working on the ground instead of up on a workbench? I do have a workbench. My shop is 1,800 square feet. My workbench is small. When it comes to these big riding mower engines and engines in general, it is easier for me to work on the ground where I have lots of room to lay out, you know, parts and, you know, tear down things and all that, then lift a heavy riding mower engine up on the workbench. These engines aren't lightweight. Um, this particular motor is probably, you know, 150 pounds, and that is really heavy. So to answer the question why I'm always working on the ground, it's easier for me. And what's with the time-lapse videos? Well, I own a shop. I have employees. It's kind of hard to talk and work at the same time when I'm trying to get things done because after all it is a business and that's what I do and plus time lapses are fun. So anyways on with the rest of the video. This was because of no oil. See all the scoring and the brakes how it exploded. You got that's what rode on the crank journal. That's what rode on the crank journal. That's a connecting rod where it broke. That is part of the piston. So I know it's got one broke piston. So I'm going to put all my tools up because we're done with this. There's going to be no rebuild on it. This one's, this one's history. It's all she wrote. She done. I'm going to pop the crank out of it, try to at least, and yeah, we run low on oil. Had oil in it, but it was just wasn't enough. I cannot turn this crank. It is seized where it goes through the block. This part right here, and this oil is just nothing but grit. Get me a screwdriver. Knock a piston out. There's another piece of a. Uh, it actually might be a cylinder. Uh, it's hard to tell. When these things throw a rod, they are pretty violent. Alright, I'm going to flip this motor over. I don't know how it wants to spin, but it's jamming on something. Oh, there's a wrist pin in there, too. Spin it around here. There's more. That's connecting rod. Uh, I can't tell if it broke a piston or a cylinder. That is a wrist pin. Wrist pin keeper. I can see that piston now. The piston's good. That's usually they don't seize to the uh, cylinder because when you run low on oil, the uh, crank journal is usually what seizes on it. So this was a crank journal seize for lack of lubrication. Let me see if I can get access to the other one. Oh, that one's not looking too good. No, that one's definitely not. Oh, that one's broken, I think. Right, we'll go ahead and stand this up and get the flywheel off. Engine teardowns, they're really, really fun. Okay. 
There went the crank. Oh, there went some more stuff. That's a really heavy flywheel. Absolutely incredible. What happens when you run something without oil in it.